But let's look at VTIP. You never see that one on, the, on this list. This is the inflation protected ETFs. If we look at just that category, these are treasury bonds that are indexed to inflation. People use them to hedge against inflation. Look at their year to date flows. They've been taking money in all year really over the past month. But look at the number of them that have taken in money. That's rare. Close to $430 million in inflows last week alone. And why are they looking for that hedge? Why are they looking to hedge that inflation risk? I mean, we know that inflation has been stubbornly low for a long time, but we also know that recent economic data has started to roll out, indicating that inflation might be back. We're moving toward consumer and financial news you can use. Yes, the Black Avengers of current culture. We've all had our grow ups in business, um, photography. I've done 20 different businesses and had some success. T Streams has done multiple, so has Larry. So this segment is dedicated to Howard Mint Quarters going forward. First and foremost, if you didn't watch my video on the Robinhood app, download the Robinhood app, start getting you some stocks. The app is absolutely free. It's one of the easiest ways to get into American capitalism. I was posed a question last week. A lot of people are fearing that with all this money that's floating around, we're gonna have inflation. And so someone asked me, well, Lamont, what's a hedge against inflation? And I said, I'll tell you one. But before I tell you, I explained to this person why me and my consumer people don't think that there's gonna be a lot of inflation this time. And it was for two reasons. Number one, this crisis was not caused by a financial meltdown. It was caused by a health concern. And while we are putting more money out there, we're having the complete opposite with oil. Oil is in a deflation, meaning that people are having to pay to store oil. And when you right. merge those two things, most economists are thinking we might not have to deal with inflation during this period. But if you are worried about it, there is an instrument you can buy called a Series I savings bond. And if you take a look at the that's where you can go and get a Series I savings bond. Savingsbond.gov. What is a Series I? It is a financial instrument in which you can buy that starts out with a set amount of interest. Currently, the set interest on it is 4%. But what they give you is they give you that set interest plus what you call the prime rate. Prime rate right now, I think it's 2.5%. So you'll be getting 5.5% on your money. And the way you do these Series I bonds is you invest either $5,000 or $10,000 in increments of you can set for a year, you can set for 10 years, or you can set for 30 years. Of course, if you set it for 30 years, you're going to get the highest return because you get all that compound interest. If you've got five or $10,000 sitting to the side and you want it to grow and beat inflation or hedge you against inflation, you could put that money in there not touch it for 30 years and that money could easily be 90 to a hundred thousand dollars if you let it sit there yep or you can buy gold or silver both of those are great are, are great ways to uh if you can afford to get in on them they're great ways to uh to hedge your bets against inflation yep so you just have to make sure you move them. Don't buy them when it's super high and you have to get rid of it before it before it drops. Because once the once the economy starts to recover, the price of gold and silver will go down. So, mm -hmm. so if you're holding I, on to it for a long term, then either way. But the trick with gold and silver is you have to actually take possession of it. Hmm. So if you don't want to do all that and have to be a, 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 a warehouse, try one of these series I bonds. They're a good, they're a good, good hedge. Yeah. Good hedge. T streams any insight financially you want to give the people on this segment yeah man you know um <clears throat> one of the things that i like to uh that i like to put out there is uh something that i uh, that i learned from dave ramsey <clears throat> and he says live like no other now so that you can live like no other later all right so when you when you think on it It'll, it'll eventually get you. <clears throat> so one of the things I want <clears throat> that I can sort of put out there that's really quick is is tackling bills to become debt free. All right. Mm -hmm. So no one likes to to roam around with a lot of debt. <clears throat> Some things you have you do have debt, house and stuff like that. All right. So what do you do when you or how do you 
uh, get rid of all that debt quickly. All right. So what you do is you create what they call a snowball effect. All right. So if you uh, if you just think of the uh, proverbial cartoon where you take the snowball, roll it down a hill, it rolls, it gets bigger, 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 bigger till it gets to the bottom and it's one is one big snowball. So how do you take that principle and apply it to your life? OK, let's say you've got five bills that you that you're in debt in. OK, one of your bills is like four hundred dollars. It requires forty two dollars a month. OK. Mm -hmm. until it's paid off and then your other ones are a little bit higher so <clears throat> you take your payments you continue to make all your payments you pay that $42 until it's done so what we normally do is once when we pay that off is we say hey I got 42 extra dollars in my pocket now all right but using the snowball effect you don't have $42. What you want to do is since you are conditioned to paying that $42 every month, you take that $42 and add it to the next payment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whatever is the next smallest bill that you have after you're finished with that one, you take that payment and you put it with that one. You're not going to miss it because you just spent 12 months paying it. All right. So you're not going to miss it. So you take, so if your next payment was was eighty dollars now it's a hundred and twenty something dollars all right as you you continue to pay that so now you so now you're paying but here's the trick anything that you pay extra you send in as principal only okay mm -hmm. so what this does what what this does is knock down from the front and the back at the same time okay and you 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 can't get it no better than that all right, so if you if you're paying your eighty dollar bill on time and then you're applying your forty dollar your your forty dollar payment from the other bill to your principal only, it's pulling off the back. Now that it's pulling off the back, interest will not accrue to that forty dollars. All right, and so it brings you closer from both the front and the back end, and you do that until that bill is paid off. And once that bill is paid off, you take that eighty that forty two. You're not going to miss it and you apply it to the next bill. All right. So you, you get the you, you get the, the, the point that I'm trying to make. And eventually, not only do you not only do you knock down the, the amount of time that you have to pay on the bill, you knock down the amount that you actually pay on the bill because now you're eliminating both interest and payment as well. So that's a good tip for you. Right. A little to expand a little bit more on what he's saying in terms of the housing market. If you have a um, house snow and you're very early into paying on it, you can look up the amortization schedule for your bank. Figure out what that is. Know what your monthly payment is for just the, the um, principal part. And you can make two additional payments throughout the year. So in my example, we have a 30 year mortgage. We got 2017 and we make two additional payments a year so instead of it being a 30-year mortgage it knocks us down somewhere around 20 years just by making two additional um principal payments every year so what we're doing is essentially knocking off the interest as well as knocking off the principal and you take years off your mortgages and you can use some of the same concepts with a car payment it ain't nothing like not having debt unless it's something that's an asset so get out there and do it. And as we transition to the next subject, which is normally- on, uh, Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. That's right. What, what, was, what was your tip, Larry? I forgot oh, all about little, that. And this, is, and this is just a quick bit here. And this is because this is someone who I've, I've gotten myself in trouble with credit cards in the past. When I was in, mm -hmm. when I was in undergrad, you know, you go to school and they, they have their little booths out there telling you to sign up for your student visa cards and all that. And right. then I eventually started paying my for my tuition and my books and stuff on there when I got you know when I when I didn't have financial aid and got in trouble with credit cards. And I will say this: if if you don't have any credit cards now, or if you want some credit cards, you want you want to build your credit or maintain your credit, I would recommend instead of actually getting a credit card, you get a charge card. And and when I would say a charge card, get something like an American Express card, American Express green card, American Express gold card, platinum card, whatever it is your credit will allow you to get because you will be forced to pay that entire amount at the end of the month. And so what it does is not only does it help you get conditioned to paying your bills on time every month because, well, you have to because it's due at the end of the month, but it also builds up your credit 
and some of the cards if you, once you have a certain once you've had a card for a certain period of time or you have a certain card like that you can actually pay the, a certain amount of like if you say you make a charge over a hundred dollars like the card i have if you make a charge over a hundred dollars you can select that one charge to pay over time so if i needed to go let's say for whatever reason my car blew up today and it needed five thousand dollars worth of work well, if I didn't want to come out of my bank account with 5,000, I can put that on my American Express card and then designate that one charge to be paid over time, where else everything else is still paid monthly. It's still paid off in full. But what that does, it sort of helps you. It helps you pay your bills off in time, but it still gives you the convenience of having a charge card. It still gives you the protections of having a credit card, you know, and you can still get the flex a little bit if you pull out an American Express Platinum card or Gold card. So, I mean, it's, that's nice too, but... Um, <laughs> It's just one of those things. I think what people oftentimes they get in trouble with credit cards is they say, okay, well, I can pay, you know, I, I I'll buy this for a hundred dollars, and then they pay twenty five for their for their their minimum payment or whatever, and then the next month they do the same thing. The next thing you know, their minimum payments going up and up and up because their balance is going up and up and up, and then you owe a few thousand dollars. Hmm. You never have to worry about that if you're paying your balance off in full. Now, some people who some people who are disciplined and pay their credit card balances off in full, even if they have a regular credit card, that's great. But if you're not that disciplined yet, start off with a charge card, get that discipline down, and then go out and get some other cards if you want them, so. And if for whatever the reason you are not living in the lap of luxury like Larry and can't get an American Express card, and Dang, you have right. and, and you have to be stuck with the normal cars us normal folk down here on the bottom of the mountain have to get, Green guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, golly, I'm, I, I'm with Larry. You want a credit card for sure because of the protections you get versus what you get when you have a debit card. But if you can't get an American Express who they typically force you or want you to pay your bill in full each month, whereas the other credit cards, they don't really care that they're pushing you to not pay your bill in full every month. Just go old school pull out a set amount of cash and pay with cash. That way you stay disciplined and work your way toward getting some decent credit cards so that you have a good credit mix. And we'll bring this all back in another episode because credit is one of those areas where we really want to get our people educated so that we can start taking advantage right. of some of the financial wealth that is out there that you might not be able to get because you don't have the income, but you can get because you have at least a decent credit score. Right, and let's talk, let's, let's talk a little bit more on that one of those episodes. Let's talk about credit cards and some of the benefits that you can get and how you can use credit cards to avoid for paying for other stuff, like how you can use credit cards to get points for travel or mm -hmm. for, for free clothes or for cash back about some of those things that, that you actually can use to help, you know, you know, help uh, defer the cost of other things that you might do in your life. Cause oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Airline points, all of the we'll we'll have a full segment for credit cards. Shout out to my man Howard McQuarters. This section right here is for you, and we're going to keep it. 